and also the all the fucking stuff with his son and the, the the ties to Ukraine and China and the money, the family that got, they got paid millions of dollars. And everyone's trying to obscure it because well, better than Trump, better than Trump. If that guy was a Republican, they would be up his ass with a microscope. What's up, guys? Boy, Benny. We don't claim to be geniuses on this program. We don't have a crystal ball to look into the future, but we do have one superpower, which is that we are alive and we pay attention. And that allows us to see patterns. Pattern recognition is actually all that we do on this program. We're able to see moments like what just happened outside of the White House seconds ago. Outside of the White House seconds ago, Joe Biden, who's on his way to California to go pick up a bunch of checks from predators in Hollywood who <laughs> are super aligned with Joe Biden's lifestyle, sniffing kids in their hair. Uh, these people are going to, again, cut Joe Biden big fat checks. Joe Biden doing his commiserate questions to the press on the South Lawn of the White House had this to say to a reporter when asked, is Gavin Newsom going to replace you in your race against Trump? Should Gavin Newsom stand by? Are you going to be replaced by Gavin Newsom? The reporter asks. Here we go. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Well, I'm looking for, I'm looking at you. We're look Are you ready? Yeah? Joe Biden's response? Like, so if you're writing this down in a transcription, is Gavin Newsom going to replace you? Are you ready? Joe Biden says, yep. I'm looking at you. Joe looking Biden. At you. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. What I came to tell you was, I told you we'd be announcing sanctions on Russia. We'll have a major package announced on Friday. I'll be happy to sit with you all while doing that, okay? Who would you rather run against in 2024? The questioner continues. Nikki Haley or Donald Trump? Nikki Haley, of course, not a Republican, but nonetheless, still inexplicably in the race. Joe Biden says this. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. Almost as though. All right, so following. Joe Biden won't be the nominee. And so many smart people are starting to say the exact same thing. Listen to Joe Rogan from the other day. I think that that's a ruse. What that you him running for president. I think You don't the, think he's going to run? No. No, I think they're going to get rid of him. I think they're going to move him out. They're going to force him to step down. That's what I think. If I had a guess, and it's just speculation, I'd say they're setting up Gavin Newsom for it. That's what I say. That's what I think. That's what it looks like to me. I think they, they, more, more and more comes out about this stuff, and more and more comes out about the Burisma thing. In the same podcast, Joe Rogan, who says there's no way that they're going to run Biden, that they're going to do this switcheroo with the greasy, reptilian, absolutely grotesque Gavin Newsom of California, uh, and that this is potentially what this trip is all about with Joe Biden. Joe Rogan is straight up saying they're using Gavin Newsom as the number one gaslighter for Joe Biden right now, and this is why he thinks that they're going to do the swap. Some Democrats really don't want Joe Biden to be the nominee. Some Democrats are actively campaigning against Joe Biden to be the nominee. Joe Rogan is saying that Gavin Newsom inexplicably is huddling up and lying to the American people on behalf of Joe Biden, as he has done so many, many times, as he has ought to do. And that's a telltale sign. Here's Joe's understanding of the situation. People are constantly trying to figure out a way to manipulate the reality of the world to get their guy past you, including high level gaslighting. I mean, we've seen some wild gaslighting. Serious just fuckery. Past, past couple of weeks talking about the economy. There's so I much. That. What was that? Gaslighting. Well, well, one of them was Gavin Newsom talking about how great Biden was and how what the the Democrats record that this has been one of the greatest presidencies ever. Full stop. It's like hot gas in your face. <laughs> it's burning your lungs. It's just <laughs> gas lighting. It's gas lighting. Yeah, his age really is a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Seth MacFarlane retweeted that and said, this is a, a million brave, crazy, so so brilliant that they did this. 
I can't. I can't. What did he say? Seth MacFarlane. Stunning said and brave. Like, it wasn't stunning and brave. No, no, was no. It? He didn't say it like that. He's a funny guy, but he said something like, "This is uh, put, written better than I could have written it, but exactly my sentiments." I was like, "This is so crazy. You're talking about a guy who can't speak. You, we all know you're doing this. You're gaslighting, and you're doing it because you think that this is the good side and the bad side is bad, and you, you do whatever you can to change the way people view things." And so you have these people that are doing it for virtue signaling. They're doing it to signal to the tribe that they're a strong, dominant member of this tribe. And they even, they're fighting for you. Yeah, there's something that I've been rattling around in my brain for some time. And Bill McBidden finally articulated here better than I ever could. It's worth a read from start to finish. Opin opinion. Age matters, which is why Biden's age is his superpower. Come on. That actually sounds like a Family Guy sketch. 100%. Or well, definitely a South Park sketch. It's crazy to say, but if you're that guy and you know, you're signaling to the tribe and you wanted everybody like a rational person who is a left progressive person would say, we have to figure this out. Yeah. This is bad. This I, is bad. You I, can't just pretend it's good. The whole other side sees how bad it is. The world sees how bad it is. People in quiet say how bad it is. Yeah. Most people in hush when they're alone having dinner, you're like, what the f do we do? Yeah. Like Trump's going to win with this guy. Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, not the first time that Joe Rogan has himself predicted that they are going to crush Joe Biden and going to kick him out, kicking and screaming. Joe Rogan predicted that the Democratic Party will use the Biden criminal bribery case to replace Joe in the 2024 Democratic nominee. This is something that Joe. I mean, Joe's from Hollywood. Joe, so many of Joe Rogan's friends are like left wing liberals. He's a man who knows things. And I mean, again, he's just one of those people that like absorb and pontificate on the energy of the moment. And Joe Rogan has been like talking about this for a very, very long time. Check it out. Are you ready to make a prediction of for the 2024 election? I don't. Um, here's my prediction. I don't think Biden runs. OK, I think. I don't Is know it, what's going on with all this stuff, stuff with his son and with the with the, yeah. the 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 evidence of corruption, how valid it is. I, I, I see all these articles about all these conversations that they had and the money that was being transferred back and forth. I'm thinking and, it's pretty valid. It's it seems real valid. But it also seems like if this is all coming out like that, what a good way yeah. to r remove a president that seems mentally compromised. Yeah. Because it seems like if you were in the Democratic Party and you thought, like, listen, there's a certain amount of people that are going to vote blue no matter who, right? We, we just need a better representation because you, you could not have Kamala Harris. She would not win. People would be very, very reluctant to yeah. vote for her for president, I think, after just listening to her yeah. talk for the last three years. Like, what? <laughs> and so who else? And there would have to be a reason for that. Who else? It's, so she it's, would have to step down. It's Californian Justin Trudeau. It's Gavin Newsom. The problem is uh, he did such a bad job with California. It's yeah. so they're so vulnerable. Like he he does spit out some good propaganda. He just starts talking about I'm very high on California and all the companies that have come from this and all the money that's generated right. and all the intellectuals and all the yeah. But you got to know the real stats of like how many of them feel stuck. Because if you ask people on the street in California, the, I think the number was four out of ten people they surveyed are thinking about moving yeah, out of California. Amazing. Which is most people don't have the ability to up and move. Yeah. I was very fortunate when all the was going down in California in whatever it was, May of 2020, when I first started thinking about moving. Yeah. I was like, this ain't going in a good direction. And yeah. I f smell chaos. Yeah. And I got out early. But if you don't get out early and you don't have the ability to get out early, like you don't have the financial ability, maybe your, your parents live there, maybe you're, you're taking care of someone, maybe your job depends on you staying there and it's a good job, you're f***ed. Yeah. And that's a lot of people. I wasn't f***ed, so I got out. And um, I don't like where it's going because I don't with, – with letting people out of jail and all this, this craziness about no bail, like letting people out they, – they arrest them when they commit a crime and put them right back on the street. No bail. No cash bail. It's not a felony if it's under nine hundred and fifty dollars. All of that stealing. stuff is crazy. When you yeah. go to CVS, you see like what it looks like <laughs> at these stores in San Francisco. Yeah. It's, it's mad mad madness. Yeah. Clo there's so many businesses that are closing down. They don't want to be a part of it anymore. They're getting yeah. out of these states. They're getting out of Portland. They're getting out of Seattle. They're getting out of these places because they're like this is. F and it ain't getting better. 
and that's what I don't like. I don't like when I don't see any course correction. I don't see any readjustment. I yeah. don't see anything like, hey, we need to uh, take care of disenfranchised people, but we also need to make our streets safe, and we have to stop crime. Okay, so we need to figure out a way to, you know, have these things, you know, mutually beneficial to everybody. Sure. And there's no none of that. There's yeah. like more ridiculous laws, more lax on crime, more money for the homeless people. Give them free drug. Give them needles. They need clean needles. Like what? But I would be missing the greater overall picture to say that Joe Rogan is the only person with a platform talking about Joe Biden needing to drop out. John Stewart, shockingly, began his uh, new old takeover of his old show, The Daily Show, uh, replacing. The DEI hire who tanked the ratings and destroyed the show, John Stewart straight up saying Joe Biden should be president, which is a wild thing. John Stewart beginning by talking about like how Joe Biden is utterly incapable of running the country. Were you counting on that? Nope. John Stewart isn't to be applauded for this. He is simply a little gremlin doing the bidding of his overlords inside of the DNC. But here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Gavin Newsom has been asked multiple times if he wants to run for president. And Gavin Newsom is, well, saying that Kamala Harris is the best choice to be Joe Biden's vice president. That's fine. Nobody was asking about that. They were asking about you being president. And Gavin Newsom says, well, Kamala Harris would be the natural successor. So what do these people have planned? I don't know. I'm not sure. Kamala Harris, like literally cackling with glee, when asked whether she's ready to be president, says that she is ready to take over the job at any time. Oh yes, I'm sure she is. Is Gavin Newsom ready for the hot seat? Gavin Newsom couldn't even answer this question from Ron DeSantis about the amount of shit on the streets in his hometown. In a total time, Governor DeSantis yeah, look, is about this, two this, minutes. This, 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 he is, needs it. this is a map of San Francisco. <laughs> There's a lot of plots on that. You may be asking, what is that plotting? Well, this is an app where they plot the human feces that are found on the streets of San Francisco. And you see how almost the whole thing is covered because that is what has happened in one of the previous greatest cities this country's ever had. Human feces is now a, a fact of life, except when a communist dictator comes to town. Then they cleaned up the streets. They lined the streets with Chinese flags. They didn't put American flags. Actually, like a really, really fruitful line of inquiry and attack there for Gavin Newsom. Uh, are either of those guys ready for prime time? We're very, very excited for Trump 2024. But ladies and gentlemen, the future, well, looks scary, but also bright. Gavin Newsom is a particularly evil person and such a liar and such a snake, and such an awful man. I mean, the more you look into his history, I mean, truly a, a malevolent leader. And so it's good to like actually start going to work on him now, okay? And that's what we're going to do on this channel. It's your boy, Benny. Like, share, and subscribe. See ya.